independent nation. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Rebecca Long Daly. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I think I can speak for many of those celebrating the Feast of St. Patrick today when I say that we share the values embodied by the story of St. Patrick, solidarity, care, kindness and compassion, and we stand in solidarity with the people of Ukraine as they struggle to protect their right to live in freedom and peace. Now, I thank the Honourable Member for Rochdale for securing this very important debate to celebrate the strong cultural, political and business ties between Britain and Ireland and the immense contribution of the Irish diaspora in Britain. As he knows, as my local MP growing up, the contribution of the Irish community, of which we're both part of in Greater Manchester, is immense. My mum's from Galway, my dad's from Belfast. And of course, we await the most recent census data, but at the census in, two, census in 2011, over 430,000 people living in Britain identified themselves as Irish-born. But as we know, this is only part of the picture. Bronwyn Walter, Emeritus Professor of Irish Diaspora Studies at Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge, estimated some years ago that the true figure for those with at least one Irish parent or grandparent is roughly 5 million, and as we've heard today, that figure has now increased to 6 million. And it's also said that if your family has lived in Salford or Manchester for more than a generation, then the chances are you've probably got Irish ancestry. Indeed, this huge Irish diaspora across the north of England has been recognised by the Irish government who've opened the Consulate General of Ireland for the north of England. And its establishment reflects a strong commitment to developing the British-Irish relationship and it will strengthen the political, commercial, community and cultural ties between Ireland and the north of England. Now, now Gallagher, Chairman of Irish Heritage, described the contribution of the Irish to cultural life in Britain as incalculable. On the contribution of the Irish community in Greater Manchester, Irish President Michael Higgins said that they've given the area countless talented footballers, vibrant cultural festivals, talented students, writers and business people. Indeed, in Salford, it's asserted that it was the Irish community who contributed to the creation of Salford as a city in its own right. During the mid-19th century, there was a huge migration of Irish people into the Salford area, partly due to the great hunger in Ireland. And in 1848, Salford Roman Catholic Cathedral was consecrated, reflecting Salford's huge Irish population at the time. It was also a huge proportion of the Irish community who built the Manchester Ship Canal, which spurred on the Industrial Revolution in Greater Manchester. Indeed, the same is true of railways, the roads and even the Channel Tunnel. From the early days of industry to the present day housing estates and skyscrapers we see today, the immense contribution of the Irish diaspora to construction in Britain is undeniable. Now, in our NHS, as of September 2021, there were 13,971 members of NHS staff in England reporting their nationality as Irish. And that included just under 2,500 doctors and 4,500 nurses. And the diaspora made their mark on culture too. In Salford, from renowned playwright Sheila Delaney, who was a pioneer in women's writing, challenging the accepted views of race, gender and class at the time, all the way through to Sean Ryder of the Happy Mondays. The list of those with Irish ancestry who have made their mark is endless. And it's also said, interestingly, that the famous song about Salford, Dirty Old Town, that many of you will be singing in the pub tonight, <laughs> written by a Salfordian Ewan McCall, has all but taken on its own Irish citizenship. It's a staple favourite tune, not just in Salford, but in St Patrick's Night celebrations right across the world. Now, in political life, as we can see today from our members of Parliament who are representing the Irish diaspora, We've also got Salfordians and Mancunians with Irish ancestry found in abundance across our political and council chambers. They're transforming lives within our communities. And historically, one of my favourite historical figures is a lady called Eva Gore Booth, who was a famous Salfordian suffragette and was instrumental in the creation of the trade union movement, which later spurred on the creation of the Labour Party. 
Now, in business, commercial ties between Britain and Ireland are stronger than ever. When President Michael Higgins came to Manchester 10 years ago, he said that over 55,000 directors who are Irish sit on the boards of British companies, and Irish people are present in nearly all of the listed occupations of the census in Britain. They've risen to distinction in all professions. That number, of course, is even greater now. But all of these achievements aside, it's the everyday actions of people within the wider Irish community that I'm so personally proud of. Those that seek to care, to nurture, to build relationships within their wider community. We've got so many amazing charitable and social organisations, such as Irish in Britain, Irish Community Care, Irish Heritage, the World Irish Heritage Centre in Manchester, Irish societies and clubs right across the UK, sports clubs, radio stations, dance and music groups, festivals and even welfare advice services. And of course special mention also needs to go to the Irish Post and the Irish World newspapers who've been keeping the Irish community in Britain connected for decades and I was forced to read on a weekly basis <laughs> by my mother to find out what was going on. So it's clear that the contribution of the Irish diaspora to all aspects of life in the UK is indeed incalculable and that the warm connections between Ireland and the UK are going from strength to strength. As President Higgins has himself said, the closeness and warmth that we laud today was founded to a large extent upon the lives and sacrifices of generations of Irish immigrants who settled in this country. Generations of Irish people who came here and contributed so positively to nearly every aspect of British society, who did so much to make Britain what it is today, while at the same time fostering, understanding, tolerance and cooperation between our two countries. So long may this strong bond continue, Madam Deputy Speaker, and La Ayla Porig Sunadiv, happy St Patrick's Day. Kim Johnson. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I'd